Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Monday, April the 30th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, I'm here to teach you some different strategies you can implement in your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you're already doing. And please remember the past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having all that out of the way, let's get it on with some economic data. Um, big week for economic data actually and today kicking it off normally with a, a Monday. We don't get a whole lot of economic data, but we are getting some good stuff this week. Uh, let's start out with across the pond. We got German retail sales coming in at a negative 0.6% expected to be a positive 0.8%. They did revise last month's number up slightly from negative 0.7% to negative 0.2%. So um, close to getting back to even, but we're still quite a bit a ways away from that, almost a full percentage point. Uh, and then preliminary CPI out of Germany came in at unchanged, even it was expected to be a negative 0.1%. So a little bit better than expected on that front. And then basically we roll over here to the United States and we got uh, core uh, personal consumption expenditures, which is PCE price index came in at 0.2%, expected to be 0.2%. Personal spending came in line with expectations at 0.4%. They did revise last month's number slightly down from 0.2% to unchanged. Personal income, a little bit lower than expected at 0.3%. Remember, we want to see personal income start to go up, especially if we're starting to see inflationary pressures going on. We need the personal income to go up to counteract some of that stuff. Uh, but personal income did come in slightly lower than expected and they revised last month's number down also by a tenth of a percent. Uh, Chicago PMI came in at 57.6, expected to be 58.2, slightly lower than expected there. Pending home sales coming in at 0.4%, expected to be 0.6%, and they revised last month's number down from 3.1% uh, to 2.8%. Uh, and that's about it for the economic data for today. Uh, rest of the week, we have, uh, we have the ISM, which is the most important number for us on purchasing managers index and prices paid, things of that nature. So that's coming out tomorrow. Services coming out, I believe, on either Wednesday or Thursday. FOMC meeting on Wednesday where they're going to release rates. We also have the crude oil inventories, ADP non-farm payrolls. Um, and then on Thursday, we get something good as well, which is the ISM non-manufacturing factory orders, things of that nature. So we're getting some really good economic data coming out of uh, the United States and across the pond because we're going to be getting some more of those flash numbers, which are equivalent to our ISM numbers. So they're, we're going to be getting some CPI numbers, consumer price index, which is going to be really uh, important to give us a little bit of gauge of what's going on with inflation and things of that nature and how people are spending. All right, on to the overall markets. Crude oil, a little bit higher today by about 26 cents. Market's really trying to digest what's going on. Pretty quiet day, uh, maybe getting ready for the FOMC, things of that nature ahead. But for the most part, we're in earnings season and uh, that is going to be one of the best economic data points we can get because we're going to see what happened in the past, what their guidance is for the future. And then we've got gold coming off as one would start to expect here. We were seeing gold really push higher as there was some strength otherwise and like in the dollar, things of that nature, which should push gold down. Uh, we're finally starting to see it relent a little bit. Been toggling back and forth over this 78 Fibonacci level today. Not looking like we're probably going to make it back up above that one. Um, but nonetheless, that is more of acting like a magnet at this point than a support and resistance, it seems like, because it is kind of moving back and forth. They are defending those areas, but uh, just not nearly as um, strong of a resistance or a support on the way down as I would expect. It's kind of peeling through it, but hanging out there. All right. Uh, 
We've got Bitcoin futures up by about $150 right now. It is toggling on this 23 Fibonacci level. I still say that this is a pretty important level uh, because it breaks this little trend here. But uh, some people may discount this little pop on a downtrend if we continue to roll over. So um, I still think it's got to go down there to that 58.50, you guys. I think it needs to print that intraday and uh, get some volume behind it before it really acts as um, a good number. And then we got the bonds moving higher today, despite the fact that we're seeing most equities trying to move higher. I think it's just a little overdone to the downside. The economic data points we're getting aren't really super robust. So I'm thinking that um, it's starting to put a little bit of doubt in the trader's mind as to whether or not we're having two more uh, hikes this year and maybe only being one more. All right, VIX coming off as we would expect with the equities moving higher. Dow Jones Industrial Average up about 170 points right now. It uh, doesn't look like much of a blip. 170 points is not a big move these days, um, but we are right between these two value areas, these points of controls. Um, and point of control for the time, point of control for the volume, where the most volume has been spent. You can tell that with this volume, it's going to, you know, there's there's a lot of volume there. There could be a lot of people trying to defend, like, let's say this 200-day moving average so it doesn't get there. Uh, but Dow Jones looking pretty strong right now. I think people are really waiting for all of this economic data we're going to be getting this week. Uh, NASDAQ up slightly by about 23 points. Not a whole lot to see there inside day. Uh, E-mini S&Ps doesn't look like an inside day here uh, because the wick is outside, but I'm pretty sure when we look at the body, it's going to be pretty close. But markets really kind of consolidating. This is what we were talking about. I thought actually we were going to get a little bit more of an overlap here. It's not really happening. Um, but markets are up. Low volumes, though. Uh, people really seem to be waiting on economic data and things of that nature. All right, trades that I'm going to be looking at for today's webinar, or sorry, today's uh, earnings trades is Cummings. You can see Cummings took a big uh, downturn with Caterpillar. I think it's going to, I'm going to play this to the downside. I may even throw a strangle on it because it could pop due to deer and some other, I mean, they make engines for just about everybody. So that some of that stuff could um, limit that downside might just be already priced in. ADM, another farming kind of uh, stock here that I have a tendency to follow. I'm going to keep an eye on this one, but I'll probably pay, I'm probably looking to play this to the downside because I think this late start on the farming season may very well cause uh, their sales did not look so good early on. Farmers may have been waiting to be buying grain and things of that nature to plant uh, uh, for the weather to turn. Uh, then we've got BP, British Petroleum. Um, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit uh, nervous about the upside on this one just because of the way Exxon Mobil took a tank on theirs. I was expecting with the high gas prices that would increase their margins, things of that nature. So they were going to be able to push those earnings higher. That didn't help. Um, so BP, it's going to either be a strangle or play it to the downside, I think. Uh, and then finally with Merck, Merck, I'm going to uh, throw a strangle on around this one because I really don't know which direction it's going to go. Hopefully we don't get this kind of a move on its earnings. Uh, so I'm going to be a little bit tentative on that one, but uh, looking to probably play this one as a strangle. And that's about it. So basically, we got uh, BP, ADM, Under Armour, I'm not going to play, Cummings, and Merck. Those are the ones I'm going to be looking at. Yes, there are a ton of them out there, but those are the ones that I'm going to be focusing on. All right. That's all I got for you guys today. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Like or dislike, Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down on this video. Give me some comments too, especially if you're giving me a thumbs down. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. And if a thumbs up, you know, always, always happy to hear some kind words and see what I'm doing right. All right. So uh, if you can't take that, take it easy.